Uh, right now I want to hand this over to uh, Romney Khalil, who was Kashama uh, Sawant's campaign manager in 2013, and he's going to uh, provide us with a special announcement. All right. My name is Rami Khalil, and uh, I have an important announcement about tonight's event, uh, sort of breaking news. Um, as you know, now that Shema Sawant is, is, has been elected, she is working to implement her main campaign pledge of a $15 minimum wage, which is really an issue that is um, touching the, the hearts and minds of, of millions of ordinary working class people across the country, given how extreme inequality has gotten, the gap between the rich and the poor. And we are focusing in Seattle, where the movement is strongest, uh, because of the fast food strikes across the country, and including in Seattle, the, the ballot initiative to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour that passed in, in a suburb of Seattle known as SeaTac, and also Kshema Sawant's election. There's a lot of momentum for this issue, this, this demand of a $15 an hour minimum wage in Seattle. But we want to work with individuals and organizations to build this movement in Portland and nationwide. And if we achieve this victory in Seattle, It'll be a 62% increase in the minimum wage from Washington State's current minimum wage of 9.32, and it'll be a victory for working people all across the country, and it'll really inspire people and open the floodgates for people in Portland and all around the country to demand a similar minimum wage. If we get this passed, which I think we will in some form, um, there is a, a study that just came out from the University of Washington. Yep. It just came out that shows that it would directly benefit 102,000 workers in Seattle, which is 24% of the workforce. Yeah. But if you raise the floor up from 9.32 up to $15 an hour, it's going to help not only those 102,000 workers who are mostly women and people of color, but it would also raise the wages of all workers, you know, that make a little bit above that, which these companies will be forced to pay more to attract employees. That's right. So. Um, What's interesting is at the moment, due to all this grassroots pressure in Seattle, the corporations and the political, all the politicians in Seattle have agreed to implement a $15 hour minimum wage, um, especially after a poll came out that showed that 68% of Seattle likely voters would support raising minimum wage. Now the mayor and every single city councilor says that they agree with the number $15 an hour. Wow. won the public debate on that, uh, which is incredible. And um, but the but the danger the dangerous situation is that because there's so much um, public support for this idea, the, the the corporations and the politicians, uh, except for Shama Sawant, are maneuvering behind the scenes to undermine a $15 hour minimum wage. They're saying they're going to pass some kind of ordinance probably in the next couple months that says. You know, the headlines will come out saying mayor and, and Seattle City Council pass a $15 ordinance, but they're trying to include all of these loopholes and exemptions in the $15 ordinance. They, are, they have this thing that they call total compensation, and the argument is if an employer is, uh, is providing not only a, a wage to the workers but other benefits, then all of that should be included towards the $15 minimum wage, minimum wage which sounds reasonable at first. Ooh. What they mean is if you get health care benefits, if you get paid sick days, if you get paid vacation days, um, and if you get tips, they want to include all of those things towards the $15 minimum wage. So after this is passed, if all of that is included, it may not really be a $15 minimum wage. It could even be a pay cut. Uh, and another thing they're doing is they're talking about implementing a phase-in, a gradual phase-in for big corporations and small businesses. Oh, yeah, so that if they implement a $15 minimum wage, but they just gradually raise it from its current level of 932, but gradually over five to ten years, um, you know, meanwhile the cost of living has been going up. It really undermines this. So um, those are some of the tactics they're using. The other tactic that the political establishment is using is they've set up a committee. The mayor has set up a committee. Um, it's called the Income and Equality Advisory Committee, and he charged this committee with the task of presenting him some suggestions about how to raise the minimum wage, doing some research and looking into it. Sounds reasonable. Um, however, the committee is stacked uh, with uh, business representatives. He says that it, he says that his committee is the best place to get things done because it has business and labor representatives. Um, but Shoma Sawant has told me that she feels that she's the only 
person on the committee that is fighting hard for low-paid workers. That yes, there are some union leaders there, but they they have this attitude of just trying to uh, agree with the big businesses and the mayor and just find some compromise. <laughs> and um, one of the people on the mayor's committee is currently in a lawsuit against the uh, CTAC for uh, trying to undermine the minimum wage that was passed there. And uh, when when the mayor announced in early January after he was inaugurated that he was setting up this committee. He gave Shema Sawant one day to, he invited her onto the committee and he gave her one day to decide whether or not she wanted to be on the committee. And he actually didn't think that she would be on it, but uh, she did agree to be on his committee, um, par partially because to un undermine the argument that said, where they keep saying that she's a great agitator and a great protester, but she's not willing to work with other politicians or business leaders. So she did join the committee, but she also said that she wasn't happy with the mayor's deadline of June to, to deliver a proposal for an ordinance. She said, I will be on this committee, I will make an effort to work with you to pass a $15 ordinance, but if they don't provide a decent, strong $15 ordinance by April, then she's going to work with unions and activist groups to have a backup option, which is collecting signatures and putting an initiative on the ballot and let the Seattle voters decide themselves what kind of $15 ordinance. Yeah! So after that, the mayor announced that he would he would increase his deadline instead of uh, charging his committee with a with the task of coming up with a proposal by June. Right. He said that he would come up with a proposal by April, um, so that you know he was making a reasonable state <laughs> effort to work with Shema and uh, low wage workers who were demanding a fifteen dollar hour minimum wage. And fifteen now has is organizing a national conference this Saturday. Uh, there's going to be over 500 people there, Glenn and Ford. Um, the mayor just announced a couple days ago that he is going to present his proposals uh, today for what kind of ordinance he would like. So he just had a press conference at 3 p.m., and Shama Sawant um, felt she had no choice but to stay in Seattle and immediately respond with her own press conference mm. at 4 p.m. today. Um, and so... Uh, I, I, my, that's all an explanation to apologize to you and explain to you why she's going to be a little delayed tonight. She's going to be a, a little over an hour uh, late coming here tonight, uh, but she is still coming. She was planning on driving. She's still committed to come here and speak to you. She, we bought a plane ticket, uh, an expensive wow. plane ticket under the circumstances, but we felt that the corporations are using Mayor Ed Murray. Uh, to get their message across, and we are doing our message to get the message across for working class people. Wow. And uh, we felt it was necessary for her to be a little late tonight so that she could get her response to Mayor Ed Murray in, into the huge news articles that are coming out as we speak. Yeah. Um, so I, I hope you understand that it's for good reason that she's late. She is a rare elected official who's actually working hard to implement uh, her actual main campaign pledge, but we do have powerful forces that are lining up to attack us. Uh, we, we recently heard that the Koch brothers, uh, it was a rumor that the Koch brothers visited Seattle to figure out how to plot against this initiative. Um, the National oh, Restaurants Association has, it's, it's reported that they've set aside $30 million to fight uh, what we're doing. So we have very powerful corporate enemies that are fighting us. Bastards. And that we so are trying to use every tactic we can to get out the voice of working class people, whether that's through social media, the you know the internet, but also uh, the corporate media is forced to listen to what Shema Sawant has to say. So she she is staying in Seattle. She stayed to uh, to do a press conference right after Mayor Murray, and that is, that is why she's delayed. Um, Good on her. Yeah. Woo!